Hey, there we are. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the shop. Oh, we'll give it a minute. To let anyone who's going to join us join. Make sure my phone's on vibrate here. Oh, hope everybody's having a good Saturday. It's a it's a hot one here. <laughs> so we'll see how long this lasts. <laughs> uh, all right, let's see. Get my screen set up here. Oh, come on. There we go. Sorry, I'm moving things around on my screen here so I can get a better view of the chat. All right, I think we're ready. So if you guys been seeing on social media, uh, hey, Mickey, thanks for joining us. Gordon, Robert, Jerry, Victor. Uh, really appreciate you guys joining in, Mikey. Um, so if you've seen on my social pages, uh, started free wing F 14, um, the, uh, curmudgeon. Thanks for, for <laughs> joining in. Um, so, you know, the free wing F 14, uh, is today. It's still probably my favorite free wing airplane. I just have a real soft spot for the, um, the F-14 is an airplane. It's probably my top three, if not my number one favorite of all time. Uh, and uh, so I'm, audio is out of sync. Let me see, hold on a sec. Make sure that Uh, yeah, I don't know. I thought I might've had the, the audio capture on, but it doesn't look like that is. So, uh, hopefully the audio will catch up for you. Um, so the F-14 is, is one of my absolute favorites. And, um, I always wanted to go back to the free wing. So I, uh, the, the original one that I did the whole review on, <laughs> Uh, I ended up selling that one quite a while ago, and, and I always regretted it, uh, and so I wanted to come back to it. Uh, so I picked one of these up late last year. I picked up an ARF Plus, uh, and so um, power system. So, so I got the ARF Plus, and then I also picked up – so these are the um, Freewing 9-blade 80-millimeter fans. Uh, and so these are, uh, this is the exact same setup that comes in the Freewing A10. So I wanted to, uh, I, I liked the stock power, but I figured if I was going to go for it, uh, I wouldn't, it wouldn't hurt to have just a little bit extra. Uh, and based on what I've seen online from guys, uh, the, these don't necessarily increase the speed hugely, but you do get a, quite a bit better vertical performance. So, um, that is the plan for the power system. Oh, and of course, got the center burner on there. Uh, I couldn't, I mean, it's an F-14. It's got to have burners. Uh, so it ends up being a super simple setup in the F-14 because we've got all of this area in here. Uh, so you can feed the wires in super easily. You can keep the controller down here and... Uh, um, I'm actually, I'm going to end up putting my receiver in there as well. So, all right, we've got a few more joining us. Justin, Mary Boozer, thanks for joining in. Frank, um, Reckham Roy's, Stephen. So, Greg, thanks for, uh, thanks for joining in. So, I got a question here. Um, you're going to make a better belly trade. Greg, yes, I am. And actually, I'm going to. We're gonna do the layup in this video. I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do I'm gonna make a, a fiberglass cover. Um, and so I've got everything 
ready to go. And part of this video, I was going to show you how to do that. So, um, curmudgeon the powerful, what's a good starter jet? Uh, I will tell you that I always recommend the E flight Viper jet. That is a fantastic, um, first jet. It, it, it it's, uh, in my mind, it's kind of ideal. It's an ideal configuration. Uh, and so um, I think that that's usually my recommendation, my go-to when the guys ask me that. So, uh, all right. First things first. Now uh, we're going to do, uh, let's talk through what I've done so far and kind of what we're going to do here. Uh, we're doing, so that again, if you're just joining, this is the free wing F-14. I'm doing a whole refinish. Now, one of the things that I get asked a lot when I do this is, hey, why do you fill in the panel lines? Uh, and so the reason for that is when you look at the panel lines, they're just too big for scale. When, when we're making a scale model, we want it to look real. And in, truthfully, in my opinion, when, when you see it with these deep, panel lines, it kind of gives it a toyish look. So when you go through and you fill all of this in, smooth it all out, it really, um, it really provides, it, it totally changes the look of the airplane and add, and gives it so much more realism to look at. Because when you, when you look at a real airplane, you don't have these huge troughs happening between panels. They're really tight seams. Uh, everything is sealed up because they don't want these airplanes to be breathing at all, right? They want everything to be sealed and, uh, and so um, they get really tight panel lines. And so I go through, fill this all in, sand it smooth. And then once, once I've done that, um, I'll add all these panel lines back in the paint with pencil. Um, back, something in my mouth. All right, so in terms of, <laughs> Justin noticed the shirt. <laughs> This was intentional. <laughs> you got to be keep a danger zone free. You got an F-14. It's got to be a danger zone free zone in here, right? You got to be responsible about this. Um, so, Michael, yeah, I was just getting to uh, the panel line. So when I I use this is oh, let's see here Sherwin Williams shrink free spackle. Um, this that's what I use. I'm using to fill in all of the panel lines, um, and so can see I've got one wing done and then I still got one wing to go I got the top done I got to do the bottom so uh, we'll, we'll end up sanding this in the course of this video um, and then here we got forward fuselage this is all sanded ready to go I've got the bottom of the fuselage all sanded excuse me and so I figured on the hatch um, I'll show you the, the fill, filler process, uh, and then we'll, I'll show you the sand process and then we'll, uh, wrap it up. So once I've filled and fared all of the, the panel lines, uh, I will coat the whole thing with polycrylic multi multiple coats of poly. Uh, and so I'll probably do about three or four coats on this airplane. And that really stiffens up the, um, this really stiffens up the airframe. In fact, uh, the, the polycrylic does give you um, a nice stiffness. Uh, and then it also uh, provides the base. And then so once I've done all of the polycrylic all over the whole airplane, uh, I'll just prep it like I do a fiberglass model. So multiple layers of primer and uh, sanding in between primer. Uh, and then uh, that's what really smooths it out. So the poly isn't, so this process, yes, it smooths and fills in the panel lines, but you still get some of that foam texture uh, or you can, and it really depends on the model too. But um, the, the primer, the multiple primer coats are what really smooth this out and give it that really um, nice look. And it takes multiple layers of primer to do that. So we'll do that in another video, probably in a, another live stream. We'll see. It's kind of hard because I can't really paint <laughs> primer inside the shop. But anyways, uh, let's get started. Let me see. What's Ah, good question regarding paint scheme. We'll talk about that. I'll talk about some of my resources too. So um, I had a question about, do I leave the stickers on? So 
any stickers that I can take off, I take off. Uh, but these are water slide decals. Uh, and since I left the paint on, trying to get this off was just going to pull the paint up. And you'll never know it's even under there by the time it's all done. So uh, sticky back stickers, I will pull off. Um, and then uh, the water slide decals, I'll leave on. And uh, yeah. The other question, scheme, paint scheme. Yes. So... This is just some of it. I always have a plastic model for reference. Uh, and when I'm doing a like a competition build, I, I really go all in on the plastic model. Um, and then I actually have a few books here. This is this is like nothing. I, I just pulled out a couple of books that I had uh, stashed away. Uh, there's a really awesome book from Deco Productions that provides a ton of resources. And here we go. It's like a complete walk around of the whole airplane in picture form. It's amazing. I have that book and I couldn't find it. So I ended up ordering another one. I'm waiting for that to arrive. <laughs> so, um, all right, paint scheme. So the other thing I like to do when, I, when I'm researching a project, whether it's a foam refinish or a competition model, I, it's kind of a sickness. I have to be able to document the airplane in some form. So I, I invest in plastic model decals quite a bit. I have a whole stack of them. Uh, so this is going to be the paint scheme. Uh, and let's see if that's working. So I'll give you guys a zoom on, zoom in on it uh, later on. But what this what this is? It's called um, it's from VF three hundred one. Uh, it's called it has a nose art on it called Fleer Cat. Uh, and so this was the airplane that they did the original Lantern Pod integration on. Uh, and from what I understand, based on the research I was doing, Snodgrass. Uh, was who has the most time in the F-14 of anybody. I uh, actually flew this particular airplane as a part of that Lantern Pod uh, integration testing that they did. So uh, that was all part of the F-14B Bombcat uh, that they all um, they, they created, I guess, uh, if you will. So, all right, let's see other questions. Uh, motions. At, at, I see. Yes, I am hoping to be out of Black Star if the event happens. There's Warbirds and Classics uh, happening there. Um, what else? All right. So, some of the books. This is a really good one. Kind of a small. It's a small book, but uh, it's pretty good. And then you know the Squadron Signal publications are decent books as well. Uh, the walk around and then it be in action. But I'm telling you that Deco Productions book is phenomenal. Uh, so that is the best resource that you can have for like details. It's every square inch of the airplane in picture form. It's awesome. All right. So let's get into some of this and show you what we're going to do. All right, first things first. Now, uh, we talked about the filler. Uh, we're going to do, I've got the, the overwing fairing hatch here. Uh, I'm going to uh, show you guys the filler process on this, uh, and then we'll come through it. I'll show you how I like to sand this stuff because uh, I actually like to use a sanding block as I do this versus using sandpaper or something like that. Um, and so let me grab this. Let me zoom this in a little bit. Uh, pardon me, I'm going to have to reposition the camera a bit here. All right, there we go. All right, so the question, 
Uh, what am I going to do to the main gear? Oh, am I going to do the main gear grass mod? I, I am going to, um, I'm going to do some work in here to harden up or stiffen up this junction because you can get, it can get a little soft in here. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll go to the extent of replacing the plate with what Rich has put together, uh, but uh, we'll see. I, I haven't gotten to that point yet, but um, and my hope is too, to be able to hide these retracts that the wheels a little bit. I'm going to put a piece across here that'll help um, at least ex hide half of the tire. Uh, but the other part of it is I actually have, this is a 3D printed pylon. Uh, and so it goes on the other side. And so if with the pylon on, it should hide a lot of this tire as well in most uh, views. So we'll, we'll see what happens. But uh, So, yeah, I'm going to play with that. I haven't fully figured out what I'm going to do there just yet. All right, so we've got the overwing fairing hatch here. Um, let's see, would the F-14 with a safe select receiver be okay for a first jet? Uh, not first plane, just first jet. I've always been... Um, I don't know if I would tackle the F-14 as a first jet. Uh, honestly, with the wings out, it flies fantastically. It's an extremely easy flying airplane. I really enjoy it. Uh, even with the wings back, it's manageable, but you do have to set it up right. So, um, honestly, I wouldn't say that would be my go-to for a first jet. I think there are better options. What I would say is you, you do the first jet and then you, you do this as like your second jet. When, once you're familiar and, um, um, comfortable flying that first one, uh, then I would say, you know, the F-14 is probably a decent, decent way to go. Uh, our, okay. So we got the hatch. All I'm going to do is just lightly sand the paint. So in my other videos, you've seen, I stripped the paint. I've, I've completely abandoned that now. Uh, I found that actually these, the paint that is painted on these airplanes nowadays sticks quite, uh, extra, quite well to the airframe. And the whole reason was for stripping that off was to avoid that paint lifting up because it didn't stick all that great. But now uh, it really sticks well. And so I just do everything over the top of uh, the, the paint. So the whole reason behind this is just to kind of rough it up. Sometimes I forget. <laughs> so I just put it over the, the unpainted paint and it's fine. Uh, but I just want to rough it up a little bit because it helps. It helps the filler to stick a little bit better when I'm applying it. really all I'm going to do there. David Poling, hey, thanks for joining. Uh, Frank, 55, asking about weight concerns. No weight concerns at all. Um, I've actually found through the process of doing this across multiple airframes uh, that the that the airplanes tend to fly better after the refinish than they do uh, before. Uh, and part, I think that's for a couple of reasons. So um, part of it is, in fact, wing loading. Uh, some of these jets, although I don't think it's really the case for this one, but some of them are just too light for the size of the model. And so as a scale model, they just don't fly right. They're too floaty. Uh, and so with a little bit more wing loading behind them, uh, they actually tend to penetrate better through the air. Uh, but the other thing is it stiffens up and smooths out the airframe as well. So you're not getting a lot of that um, turbulence and uh, that you might otherwise get from all of this surface, these big surface uh, features. Um, so, 
so yeah, I'm not concerned about weight at all. Uh, and actually the airplane, it, it's going to have additional power as well. So there won't be any problems. Okay. So I'm applying, this is the filler. Let me put this here. Um, so the filler, all I'm doing is just slathering it on into the panel lines just to fill it all up. Uh, and then we'll set this aside and let it dry. Um, so yeah, TF, hey, I really appreciate you joining in. I thank you for your kind uh, comments there. I really appreciate that. As long as uh, you guys find it helpful, I'll keep doing it. <laughs> The live streams have been kind of a, a fun, fun adventure I'd not really done before. So it forces me to clean up my shop too. So thank you. <laughs> All right. So I had a question about batteries. Let's see. Uh, oh yeah, but thanks Perry for reminding me the applicator. This is an artist spatula. I get it at an artist supply store. I have a couple of these here. Um, so yeah, I, I forgot to mention that. <laughs> so that's how I apply these. You can also use like a squeegee. Um, uh, I don't know where it went or actually. The other thing you can do if you've got an old uh, gift card or something like that, you can use that to apply it in here as well. I prefer this because it's a little bit more localized and I, I'm i lazy. I want to fill it all at once. I don't want to have to come back and add more filler. So I'll add extra. I, um, I know my friend Brent, <laughs> uh, he likes to add multiple layers of filler. And I just, I don't want to do that. <laughs> so this helps keep it in a small area. Uh, so let's see, I had another question. What batteries am I going to use uh, this time? So I am going to stick with the 5800s for now, the, the Roaring Top 5800s. Uh, I don't, getting larger packs is going to be tough because you still have the, um, that the, there's limitations in in the space in, in the battery bay, so uh, we'll see. But I'll, I'm going to start with the 5800s. If I can do like a 6250, that would be good. Uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, but I am going to be locating like my receiver and everything as much as I can in the back of airplane here versus up in the nose because that's going to help me with the battery um, location. So, okay. So I had a question about automotive body fillers. Nope. This is just a lightweight shrink free spackle from um, Sherwin Williams. Sands super nice. Uh, I, in uh, my lady Alice videos, I used uh, hobby light filler, but I've, I've learned that's, I don't think that's available anymore. Uh, so I found, my dad actually found this Sherwin Williams spackle uh, and it's fantastic stuff. It, it sands super nice. Uh, it applies real nice and it's actually smoother than the Hobby Light filler. So it, it has a, a smoother texture to it. So you can actually apply fill, this filler over the painted surface, once this is done, sand it smooth, add a little polycrylic and localized primer, and you'll never even know. Uh, so I, it's been, uh, it's it's a re really good stuff. I got a few more questions here, let me see. Uh, let's see. All right, do you cover the whole aircraft with spackle or just the panel lines? Um, I am only covering the, the panel lines Areas where I have like holes or hard texture, um, I, I might add some filler to try and smooth that out, but generally it localized on panel lines. All right, so uh, here we go. We've got all of this spackled up. I'm gonna set this aside. Uh, I've got a little crease here. 
So I'm going to add some filler in that crease. And then that's it. That's all we do. Let it dry and come back and sand it another day. All right. So I had a question about the servo wire channels. Yes, I ended up filling these in. Uh, I went back and forth, but ultimately I realized if I have to replace a servo, I'll just snip it here at the servo and I'll splice in the new servo so that I don't necessarily have to pull all of that out. Uh, so, uh, hey, Rich, thanks for joining in. Yeah, if you're you're uh, willing to send a set of plates, that, that'd be great. I'll happily use them. Um, so I'll, uh, I'll send you a message and we can talk about that. Uh, let's see, who else? Justin, are you going to change the wheels and tires? I am actually going to use, change these tires out. I just haven't gotten there yet. I'll probably look at some Robarts or something like that. Um, but we'll see. Uh, I also downloaded, there was an STL file for servo cover, or not servo covers, for um, wheel covers, hub covers, hub caps. So I'm going to print those out and I'll put those on the airplane as well. Um, so once I switch out the tires, of course, uh, what else? Uh, let's see, 6250s run there. Yeah, Perry, I was looking at aluminum tape and I actually cut some out. I started doing that, but then I was like, yeah, let me just, I'm just going to fill them in because <laughs> ultimately that's going to give me a smoother contour. Um, okay. So Super Veronica 9, hey, Liverpool, thanks for, for joining in. All right, so now here is the right wing. We got the top side. It's already been sanded. I've got some areas I still need to touch up here. Uh, but the whole underside, we, we got, got to do some sanding. So I like to use a um, – I like to use a sanding block versus hitting it straight with just sandpaper uh, because what the block does is it, it ensures that I get a straight contour – it's funny, you would think that trying to sand a curved surface, you would want a curved uh, piece of sandpaper or something, but it, it doesn't actually work out that uh, well. So I have a couple of sanding blocks. I have a small one here, and I made this out of a couple. I just glued a couple pieces of basswood together, and I made made this so where I, areas I can't use the big block, I use the small block. Uh, and so, yeah. So I'm just going to attack this. Sand it a lot like I would a uh, like a, a if I'm sanding a, a balsa wood wing or something like that. So now you don't have to put the filler on as heavy as I do, but like I said, I, I'm I'm pretty lazy. I don't want to have to come back and add more. <laughs> So this particular sanding block, I, I think I got it from Tower Hobbies like forever ago. Um, I have some, this was a piece of just T aluminum <laughs> that uh, I got from my dad forever ago. Uh, but you can make them, you can make sanding blocks out of pretty much anything. Um, yeah, sanding sponges will work. Uh, I prefer the harder a harder surface but you do have to be careful as you're sanding this because you can gouge the surface i've certainly done that plenty of times so see just i just gouged it right there <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> I 
So I'm using a 180 grit sandpaper. I use that because um, it'll keep it from cutting through the paint super fast because once you cut into the foam, uh, the um, it's, what ends up happening is the foam tends to like whisker and stuff. So the 180 kind of helps keep from cutting it too quickly. I'm going to sand this a little bit more and then we'll go to the next step here. back to this. I want to show you the next step. It's, you know, sand, baby sand. It just takes time. Uh, but the end results are, are most certainly worth it. Um, so we've got, this is the hatch part here. This is super easy. All right, that'll work. And you'll see, see that the bottom looks all nice and smooth, but then I turn it over <laughs> and it's not so smooth. So I got some work to do there. I'll spare you that. I'll spare you that. <laughs> All right. So the next part of this process, or actually, let me show you. So you can see this is where I filled in all of the, uh, the servo wires. I went back and forth about doing that, uh, but ultimately, it's like th this was going to give me the smoother harder surface. One of the other things I want to point out, you can see here. So I've masked off the wingtip light. I'll pull this closer. And the lights that they have, you know, the, the clear lenses that they have out here in the wingtips are just way too big for scale. And actually, I probably still have the light too big in here. Uh, and so I may adjust this tape, but what I ended up doing is I just cut small strips of frog tape. Uh, and so then applied that in the shape that I wanted, um, on the light bezel. So I've been using frog tape a whole lot more lately. It's really good stuff. I enjoy using it quite a bit. All right. So we got a couple tails here. I'll sand it all ready to go. What I'm gonna do is roll up my blanket here. So now, this is all sanded, it's all ready to go. Um, doesn't need any additional work. And one of the things I noticed was that the stabs were kind of warped, uh, and this one still has a little bit of a warp to it. So I'm going to straighten that out before I, and I'm just bending it with my hands. Uh, this one, yeah, it's pretty straight. So I just want to lift these off the surface. Uh, while I apply, apply the polyacrylic. So I've got the poly here. Don't necessarily want to shake it because it adds a lot of, um, uh, air into it bubbles. Um, 
that you don't want in your surface. Uh, so then Tony from, from Diego, her post-it notes work the best low tack won't lift original paint. That is absolutely true. Uh, you do have to make sure you push those post-it notes down well enough that they'll hold uh, the edge. They will tend to lift up after you paint them. Uh, but yeah, they work great. Frog tape, I found as well, works pretty well. Um, all right, so it's just a foam brush. I got some <laughs> dog hair in your foam on the floor. Um, I'm just going to apply this lightly over the surface. And then what this is going to do is it's just going to seal all of that work, uh, seal up the, uh, the filler. And then it's going to give me a hardened surface to work from. Now, one of the things to note about this, you don't want drips coming around on the other side. Uh, you do want to be cognizant of that because uh, the drips don't sand. The stuff doesn't really sand that great, so you want to make sure that you apply it pretty smoothly um, so you don't end up having to sand it. I will lightly sand it once it dries, and I've applied the multiple coats that I want to put down. All right, so get the other one here. No drips on the underside, that's good. You do want to make sure you get it around the leading edge for sure. Um, yeah, I think that's good. So we'll let those dry. Uh, and then I'll need to clean this with water. I'll do that later. So let those dry. Now, the other thing I wanted to do So this is a piece of glass that I have here. Uh, Frank is asking how long to dry. Uh, once it's dry to the touch, uh, it'll be good to go. I can go to the other side. It doesn't take too long. Depends how, how hot it is. Um, how about airbrushing? Uh, airbrushing on the poly, you can do that or... Um, I'm not sure I fully understand your question. You can airbrush directly onto the model uh, if you want, or you can directly paint over the polycrylic. Um, it's just kind of a sealer. Uh, so then, yeah, John Kunkel, you're right, sandable auto primer. So the poly just serves to, to seal it all, and then I'll use an automotive primer over the parts uh, to um, to prep it, that you got to get those multiple layers of primer uh, to really smooth out the, the surface, for sure. Uh, yeah, glazing putty will does work, um, but yeah, I mean, even even the filler will crack if it, if you bend it, right? Um, so you do have to be careful how you handle the models and stuff. So, uh, Mark twenty three mod zero. Uh, does the polyacrylic help with popcorning? Unfortunately, I have not found anything that helps with um, popcorning. So you just got to keep them in the shade. Even fiberglassing, uh, it doesn't matter. The foam is just going to do it. And certain colors are much worse than others. So if you have a really dark paint, uh, then it's uh, it's can get it popcorn up real fast. So you just gotta be really careful. <clears throat> okay, so uh, grit sanding paper TF was asking about. Yeah, Danny, you're correct. 
I used 180 grit sandpaper to sand all of the, the filler. Uh, and the reason I go with the 180 because it keeps from breaking into the paint. Once you break through the paint, uh, you can start to whisker up the foam, which you want to try and avoid as much as you can. So the 180, I find, cuts the filler really well, uh, but still won't cut heavily into the paint. So, all right. So what we're going to do here, I've got this glass shelf, and this is the centerpiece for... The, the, um, the cover for the speed controllers and all of that. Now, I don't want to use this. I'm going to, I want to use a fiberglass piece. Uh, you can actually use um, like sheet styrene plastic, uh, but I figured I use it as an opportunity to show a real simple way to lay up fiberglass. So um, this is a glass shelf. <clears throat> and what this is, is this is a, uh, mold release wax. And I've already coated this two times with the wax. I've coated and buffed it twice. Uh, I'm going to coat it one more time, buff it one more time, uh, and then I will do the next step. And what we're going to do is we'll lay up the fiberglass on top of this glass. And so that'll give me a nice smooth sheet of fiberglass that I can then cut this cover out of. So now I'll have one single piece, no perforations or anything like that. Uh, and I will probably put some NACA inlets in it to help with the ESC cooling. Um, try and keep it as, uh, keep it as, as unnoticeable as possible, I'll say. Uh, okay, so uh, I have put the wax on, or just a paper towel. I'm just going to buff this out. So the process I'm showing you here um, is when, when a company makes a fiberglass part, uh, for example, the nose here, you have to prep the mold in some way. And so when you're laying up fiberglass that you want to release out of a mold or off of, a, in this case, a shelf or something like that, you have to prep it in a certain way. So what this, so I have three coats of the mold release wax here. Uh, and I haven't actually used my resin in a really long time. We'll see if it's still good. But uh, so now what this is, this is uh, called PVA and it's a water-based mold release. So you have the wax in combination with uh, the PVA and um, it gives you a surface that the fiberglass will release from very easily. So I'm going to paint this all across the glass shelf. Then we'll have to let it dry. Then we can start our layup process. All right, so I'm going to let that dry. I'm going to zoom this out real quick. I'm going to reposition. All right. So while that dries, I figured uh, we'll talk through a couple other things. Oh, and if one of you reminds me, um, uh, I when we're back on the close-up, I'll show you a close-up of the paint scheme. <laughs> so if one of you guys reminds me in the event that I forget, actually, let me grab that. I won't forget. Try, trying to <laughs> avoid zooming in and out a whole bunch. 
uh, just for your sake. So looks like it's getting there. Uh, all right, so where do I get my fiberglass supplies? That's a good question. So John, <laughs> I got this stuff from my folks, <laughs> uh, but they get their their resins and uh, from PTM and W. Uh, you can use all sorts what you want. Um, <laughs> short pants. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, what was I going to say? So in terms of the fiberglass, you can really get that anywhere. Uh, with, but for laying stuff up, you want a laminating resin. Uh, and you can, for something like this, you can actually use the, the Pacer Z epoxy. Um, I know guys uh, use um, West Systems. There's all sorts of different suppliers out there. Uh, so I'm just using what what my folks use. And they just kind of provide. <laughs> I have a little stash of it here, um, and so it's, it's kind of what I'm using. So uh, 101 in Phoenix. That's pretty dang hot. It's like 80 something here. Actually, no. 80 something in my garage. <laughs> it's like 90 degrees outside. Uh, stay longer to dry than I thought. So while that goes there, what I can do is I'll show you uh, masking the, the light. All right, so what I have off screen here <laughs> is a cutting mat uh, and I've placed some frog tape on the cutting mat and I'm gonna cut a 1 8 inch strip off of that frog tape. And then I'm gonna use that to mask off the light bezels, or the lenses. All right, there we go. Uh, let me zoom this back in. Reposition here. All right, there we go. All right, so as I mentioned earlier, the light lenses that are the stock ones here are just way too big. When you look at pictures of the real airplane, the The light lenses are actually quite small. Let's see if I can find a picture in here. So if you can bring this a little bit closer. On the very top corner of the tail is a red light. <laughs> and it's a fraction of the size of what's on, on the model here itself, right? So I'm going to correct that. Uh, and so based on how I mask these off, I can correct that, uh, how that looks. So this white light here uh, on the, the real airplane is actually quite small. So I've got frog tape here. I'm just going, going to mask off but I want to stay clear. All right, and then I'll have to cover it all up. No, that didn't work out. <laughs> Try again. <laughs> Fail. Okay, Ahmed, maidens, your A6. Congratulations on a successful maiden. 
the original A6s, the free wings, yeah, they the power was sufficient to fly it around, but the verticals and stuff were kind of lacking. But it's a good flying airplane. Uh, so Neil Max is asking, yes, you can use the spray, uh, polyurethane or the polycrylic spray. You can. I've done that before. It doesn't cure quite as hard as the stuff in the can, though. Uh, I have found that it's not it's not quite as rigid a finish. Um, okay, so now let's mask off the top light here. So then once I have uh, once I have the airplane all painted and I pull this tape off of the lenses, I'll actually end up painting them the appropriate color. So I have so Tamiya makes clear red, clear green. Um, so I it might be a little bit small. Let me try that again. Uh, so I use that to spray the lights quite a bit. And I talked about that in my um, in my C27 repaint video a little bit. Uh, that's a good point for this one. Yeah, use a piece of rubber tube or, or even a brass tube or something like that will certainly work very well. Here we go. That looks a little bit better. Okay. So now I need to trim these. Okay, so we've got, we have this outline now, we just need to, to cover the rest of it up. <laughs> uh, so what am I using for filler? I'm using the Sherwin-Williams Shrink-Free Spackle. Yeah, man, the PBA is taking forever to dry. All right there it is so this all mass off and so now what i'll do is i'll come in and i'll clean up and fill in around the light uh perimeter so it's a little bit smoother a little bit cleaner all right so since we're zoomed in here we'll give you a better close-up of the paint screen maybe <laughs> All right, so um, the F-103, this is a decal sheet from um, Eagle Strike Productions. I'm not sure you can get it anymore. I search for this stuff everywhere, eBay, uh, <laughs> anywhere I can find it, uh, Amazon. Like, I don't know, something about plastic models. I just absolutely love them. And I love collecting them. I don't build them a lot, uh, but I do build them occasionally. Uh, and I have a good time doing it. All right, so PVA is taking forever. So let's put a, I've got a fan over here. Maybe that'll help. not quite dry it's pretty close uh, 
Uh, but we can put the coat on the other side. Should be dry enough. Didn't plan the PVA right. I, I didn't think it was going to take that long to dry. All right, so adding the first coat on the underside of the stab here. And this is just a Minwax polycrylic. Uh, like I mentioned, you can use the spray. I've done that before, but I, I prefer the brush on type because it dries a little bit harder. Raygun, love your work, man. I, I really appreciate that. I really, you know, the, the, you guys being here and, and watching and following along just helps keep me motivated to provide more content for you guys, more information. So I really appreciate your feedback. All right. Good there. Get the other one going, and we should be hopefully the PVA will be ready to go. So, I've been uh, Neil Max watching the T6 repaint video, still have that airplane, I, and I love that. Over, I haven't flown it in, in quite a while. I haven't done any flying in quite a while with all this lockdown business, but um, yeah, that's a fantastic flying airplane at T6. It was a lot of fun. Uh, all right, I think we're good there. No drips on the underside. All right, set that aside. Uh, let's see. Hot box, yeah, that's what I <laughs> I definitely need that. If I just put it outside, it would be dry in like two seconds. Oh, there we go. Nope. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> Still not dry. Uh Yeah, that's true. Gatoring, gatoring foam parts with a hot box is absolutely true. I'm going to zoom this out again. <laughs> We're almost there. <laughs> should have, should have planned that better. Close. It's really close. Actually, what I can talk about is cockpit. So <laughs> I probably shouldn't have pulled this off yet because it gets uh, pretty flimsy back here in the back. Uh, but I couldn't wait because I wanted to, I was curious about the pilots and I'm gonna do a bunch of work in here uh, to improve the cockpit. I pulled the pilot out of the one because I have a 3D printed pilot. It's gonna end up going in here. You can see. Um, and then this is the head sculpt for it. You can see it. I'll leave it here when I zoom back in. Uh, so, but I'm not sure, I don't know if you guys know of any, if there are any CAD parts out there uh, for this stuff. I don't know, I'll probably otherwise just do a little work on the stock parts, cover them in cardstock so they don't, um, so they don't gator up. Or you don't see any gatoring that could happen. So uh, let's see, be careful not to gator your foam parts with a hot box, very true. <laughs> um, yeah, our California weather, it's, 
definitely can't complain. The problem is we've been on lockdown. We can't go do anything right now. <laughs> so, uh, uh, let's see. I can't do your airbrush tutorials because I only have spray can paints available here in the Philippines. Uh, you can use, you, you don't have any kind of acrylic paints or anything like that that you could use in an airbrush. I'm just kind of surprised. Um, what you can do is you can take the spray paint, spray it into a cup, uh, and then you can use that paint um, in your airbrush. I've done that quite a bit actually. So if you just spray the paint into a paint into a cup, pour that into your airbrush, you can use that. Uh, yes, Justin, this is an SLA print. When I zoom this back in, if the PVA ever dries, uh, I will. Um, I'll give you guys a closer look. Oh, the airbrush kits are hard to get. Got it. Um, yeah, and I would imagine that uh, shipping something like that to the Philippines is pretty expensive too. Um, yeah, that's. I don't know what to. I don't know how I can. How I can help you there? Unfortunately. Uh, site is still open yeah i wish our sites were open <laughs> it's been so i'm dying to go flying man all right one last check i hope it's ready i think i think, I think we got it i think we got it good enough all right yes <laughs> I'm going to zoom this back in. I'm going to show you the fiberglass layup process. It's super quick, super easy. Give you guys a close up of the uh, pilot. And then, all right, here we go. We zoom this in. All right, first of all, always flying. Hey, welcome. Thanks for joining in. Uh, so here is the pilot. This is indeed, it's a, a resin SLA printed pilot. Uh, it's not actually the head sculpt that comes with the pilot. So this is a pilot I purchased off of CG Trader. Um, the, but the head sculpt came from somebody's, uh, I printed some parts for somebody. And it was one that he provided, and it looks quite a bit better than the one that you get um, with it. So this is the head sculpt that comes with it, scaled at a little different size because the stocks, the size between the body and the head was just way too small. But I actually like this head sculpt a little bit better. So that's what I'm going to go with, and I'm going to end up putting servos in here and I'm going to have all of the pilots heads moving. So then here is the right, arm is positionable. So I'll have the guy in the front, obviously holding the flight stick guy in the back will be, I don't know, pointing at something on the, on the display or who knows what. So, so yeah, that is the pilot I've got. Uh, I have them all printed now. I just need to figure out how I'm going to get them in there. So I got there's a lot of work to be done on the, on the cockpit. So we'll see what happens. Okay. Fiberglass. So just to recap what I want to do. So this is the perforated plate that goes through the midsection. Uh, in on the F-14, I don't want to use this. Uh, so I have, um, I created, I made some fiberglass sheet years and years ago, uh, but unfortunately it's not big enough. So I figured I would show how to make that. Um, all right, so set this here. I have two weights of fiberglass, all right? This is a layer of two ounce glass. This is a layer of six ounce. 
Uh, I could probably get away with just a single layer of six and be fine, but I figured why not? So the other thing I have here, I have a gram scale. All right, so I have to weigh out this resin appropriately. That's my resin. So let me, re I'm going to reposition the camera just a little bit, guys, so you can see a little bit more of what's happening. Sorry about this. So that way you can see the materials a little bit better. Okay. So this is my resin, Ma Victoria <laughs> style. I'm a catalyst. Uh, so you have to get the mixtures right, and it's a 10% mixture uh, between the resin and catalyst. Or, sorry, 15% in this case. It, it's, it's resin dependent, so you can't. <laughs> You've seen better scales than meth labs. You know, I use this for resin casting. I weigh out resin casting uh, or resin parts. My, my kids are making pilots. Uh, my old, the old pilots that I used to make, I didn't want to make them anymore, so my kids are making them. But as a result, my scales have kind of suffered. All right, so here is the resin. Hopefully this stuff is still good, pretty thick. I haven't laid up fiberglass in quite a long time. So we will see. All right, so the weight here, 14.7 grams. We take 14.7 times 1.15. All right, so I need 17 grams. Seventeen. Oh, catalyze it a little hot, so shouldn't be a problem because I'm not laying up a big area, anyways. So the resin itself is um, <laughs> well, all about me is back. <laughs> My wife is exceptional at fiberglass. She used to lay, to lay up fiberglass for her dad back in the day. Uh, so let's see what other questions. <laughs> so I'm just mixing up the resin now and what I'm going to do is the gift card that I pulled out earlier, I'm going to use that to just wet out the cloth. And again, the resin, you can use any, any kind of fiberglass resin to do this. Um, Danny Murphy, no, my wife does not fly. She's not really interested in airplanes at all. <laughs> but she doesn't mind that I am, which is cool. She's the best. Uh would the CG shift after you repaint a model? It can. Well, you may have to relocate your batteries slightly to maintain the CG. Um, so, all right. So I got the resin here. Well, hopefully I made it up. So I just pour it and I'm just going to wet out the cloth. I'm going to have to make more resin. I didn't expect it to be so thirsty. Okay. 
So you can see the resin is wetting out the cloth, but I didn't make <laughs> nearly enough. So mix up more. A uh, small sponge roller, that's a good point too, yep. Yeah. In this case though, I don't want to soak up resin. I want to wet out the resin through the cloth. Uh, so I would foam, foam roll it after I'm done to wipe up any excess. 28.5. <laughs> really catalyze this one, so. <laughs> Brian, your wife buys you a plane every Christmas? Kill her. She's a keeper. My wife, uh, one year built a airplane for me. She built, a, it was a MM Glider Tech wedgie. It's flying wing. She built the whole thing for me and gave it to me. I think it was for Christmas. Back when we were dating, it was a long time ago. It was awesome. Um, so Neil, Max, the spray cans will work. Uh, all right. On your A4, they should. All right, let's wet this out more. <laughs> uh, so Frank 55, this is actually epoxy resin. It has the greenish hue because uh, of the PVA that I put down on the glass shelf. Because it, it has a green color. So as I do this, I want to try and squeegee out as much resin as I can because I don't want, I want it to be as light as possible. So I want to wet this whole thing out and then I'll come in with a, um, a paper towel and, and sop up any excess. All right, let's make sure that, yep, should be good. Any other questions? Let's see. Over catalyzed work faster. Yeah, that's right. Uh, it does. It will exotherm on you. Once it starts to get hot, it'll go. It'll go real fast. But uh, in the cup, I think that will do it. I just want to get out any excess. All right, I'm going to throw this away. I put, you don't want any wet spots in this because wet spots mean excess resin. So I should do it. Try to spread it out as much as I could so it should be fine. There we go. We just made 
fiberglass sheet. I'm going to zoom this out, and we'll wrap this up. All right, I got to clean this. But we'll see what happens. <laughs> I'm going to leave this in the cup. It's not getting hot yet. We'll see if this stuff kicks off. It's so old. I don't know. <laughs> Hopefully it works out. <laughs> so I'm going to put this in the back. And put away my, my disgusting <laughs> gram scale. <laughs> All right, I should be wearing gloves. Yes, you're right. I should be wearing gloves. <laughs> All right. So Brian K. Mafro, yes. There. <laughs> uh, you should refinish your F14. It's it's this airplane is most certainly worth this amount of effort. It's such a good flyer. It it looks good, uh, and cleaning it all up and smoothing it all out with with. Uh, the panel line filler and all that stuff, it really changes the looks completely. Uh, <laughs> what the hell is going on here, Dave's RC? We're just doing a little work on the free wing F-14. Uh, so, yeah, I think that's about all I wanted to show you guys today. It's starting to get pretty warm in here. Um, but just to recap what we did, right, we talked about – the refinish process, okay, so um, in the case here, you know, Freewing F14, uh, gone through, filled in all of the panel lines using um, um, Sherwin-Williams shrink-free spackle, filled it all in, right, sanded it all flush, which is done here. Um, so we showed you guys the application of it on the overwing hatch. Uh, and then this should be ready to sand in uh, another hour or so. Sanded it all smooth. Uh, let's see, Danny Murphy, you can also go to an electric motor repair shop and get, yep, you're right, G10 uh, material works. You can also use like 64th ply, um, but... I had the materials I wanted to show making fiberglass. So, um, but yeah, you're right. You can use any number of materials, basswood, uh, 64th plywood, balsa wood even. Um, yeah, any number of things. So uh, what else? So then we uh, sanded some of the wing here, um, showed you some of that process, right? We've got the, the fuselage, this is about ready to go. Uh, I still need to sand the top of the fuselage, uh, and then I need to uh, sand the other wing. But then the other thing was we applied first coats of polyacrylic on the tails. Uh, so this is a good a good thing. That's progress. Um, And so then we made the fiberglass sheet, uh, and that is as a replacement for this cover that goes through the bottom of the airplane where all the speed controllers go. So we laid that up, uh, and so we're well on our way. So let's see questions. So if, oh, I teased a big reveal. Perfect, the perfect reveal for this one. So, what's in the rafters? It's kind of been, it's kind of been a thing. I got, I got to make some space for this one. Because if you've not, if you've not joined us for the live uh, show, I've got a whole series of racks up here with projects just waiting, uh, waiting to be built. So let's see, just got an F4 free wing, the flying side is altitude of, oh, what, 13,000 feet? <laughs> Man, good luck. That is, that is crazy high. Uh, all right, so the reveal, we'll be right back.
<laughs> you guys should know what that one is. <laughs> So this F14, this is a DCU F14. Uh, it's the same size as the Jet Hanger F14. My dad made that Jet Hanger F14 mold for uh, the movie Top Gun. Uh, it's the exact same size. The difference is that this one is a fully developed kit. Um, and so I've been holding on to this one for a very special occasion. I'll be getting the full, it'll, she'll be getting the full treatment. I'll do, uh, I want to look at doing spoilers uh, and of course flaps. Love to do slats in it, but the wings are really thin. So I don't know how, uh, how that will, <laughs> if that will have a problem, not very likely that it will. So, uh, <laughs> Model's wearing its band-aid down. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh, let's see. So yeah, this is a DCU. Um, my so DCU actually used to make the fiberglass fuselages for my dad, but now they, they actually still exist. I don't know if they're called DCU anymore. Um, but Mark Hamilton still ex his owns the company, but they're doing a lot of. They do all aerospace stuff in there. I think based in Texas now. Uh, but so this was the big reveal. I, I thought it, it was only appropriate given the, the free wing, the F-14 project we got going. So <laughs> can you take polyurethane to show coverage? I'm not sure what that means. Can you explain what you're looking for there, Terrence? So this is one tenth scale. Uh, it's an even one tenth scale. Uh, the likelihood that is that I will make it a twin EDF. Um, you know, as big as the airplane looks, there's not a whole lot of space inside, uh, and so you know, fa fans would go um, right through here, but then batteries. There's tons of space right here for batteries. Um, so the CG is right about here. And because of the trough through the middle, it's not a whole lot of space for like fuel tanks and stuff like that through here where you really wanted to be kind of on that CG. So I think that the EDF might actually work a little bit easier, but I know guys have done it on turbine. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Bryce Watson. He built the DCU F-14 years and years ago for the General Masters. Uh, ended up crashing, but uh, that was the kit and it had two turbines in it, flew uh, fantastically. So uh, EDF size, twin 120s, most likely they could do twin hundreds even. Uh, hundreds might do a little bit better. Uh, the difficulty is, so the way that the model is designed, the inlets are um, inside the model. However, the guy that I got it from got it from a guy who hacked up those inlets, so I'm going to have to remake those. But the inlets are part of that character structure for the wing, uh, so I'm going to have to make sure that I really uh, that I really do that right in there. So um, I'm going to have to redo all of that. But yeah, um, so that's the big reveal, guys. <laughs> I got more, but I'm I'm starting to. Starting to run out. You can only you can only pull so many things down. <laughs> so I'll have to say something for next time. Uh, let's see. Uh, so David Snyder, yeah, most likely 120 millimeter jet fans in this case. I've been thinking a lot about uh, my um, the power system for the big FJ Fury. I think I'm going to go with a uh, 14S Schubler fan in that one, but uh, we'll see. That one's going to be, so the, the Fury is going to be, once this is just about done, the Fury is going to be the next big project that's going to be hitting the bench. And so can you tint the PO to show coverage on the phone? Ah, okay. 
Uh, that's a good question, Terrence. I'm not sure. I, I assume that the you should be able to tint the, the polyurethane, but I'm not sure with what. It's water-based, so maybe you could use a, a food coloring or something like that. Uh, but what ends up happening is you can usually see if you if if you can reflect the light off of it when it's dry, it dries in a satin. Um, so if it's wet, it's still glossy. So you can generally see areas that you missed if you look at it a certain way. So EQRCA, we'll catch you next time. Thanks for joining in. Um, let's see, what was the other question? So how far in the queue is the F14? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's a bit down in the queue. I got to get that big FJ4 done. Uh, once I get that done, then... Uh, I'd really actually like to get back to my sky ray. I'll bring that one up. <laughs> uh, so this is my sky ray project that I started forever ago. Um, I got it as far as speed brakes. I did a video on that, but, uh, so after the fury, I, I really want to get back to this. And then once this is done, I'll probably start looking at the F14. Um, so yeah, <laughs> the boss is calling. Um, so yeah, that's it. Do you print SLA yourself? Uh, so I do print SLA. Uh, I have a, a, any cubic photon that I use uh, for printing SLA. And that's what I printed those pilots on. It's a great little printer. Um, the, the, the SLA process, I'm not a huge fan of. It's really messy. It's smelly, but it makes amazing parts. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, can you just show what you used on the glass before you laid on the fiberglass? Yeah, so. <laughs> I was actually coming to say hi, but then I saw a second airplane come out. <laughs> I didn't want to get involved in the long, long conversation of another big ass airplane. Well, there's lots of big ass airplanes. <laughs> um, so. Before I laid the fiberglass, I had a glass shelf um, that I, I put three, co three coats of mold release wax uh, buffing in between. Uh, and then I, once I had the wax coats down, I used uh, a PVA, which is a water-based mold release. Uh, and then once that was dry, I laid the fiberglass over that. Uh, and so th th these are critical for um, laying up fiberglass. It's just allowing it to release. You gotta, you gotta put that stuff down. Otherwise you're not gonna be able to lift it up. And, and although the glass may be, uh, but you have to use a specific, you, you need to use a mold release wax. Uh, you don't wanna use like a car wax or something like that. So you need something that'll hold up to temperatures and things like that. Uh, so, all right, guys, um, I think that's about it. <laughs> Where did you find her? My wife hates the camera. We'll avoid being on camera at all times. <laughs> uh, I actually met my wife at the AMA trade show many, many, many years ago. So that's a story for another day. <laughs> but... You can find the love of your life at an RC event. It's not likely, but it does happen. So, all right. Um, I think that's it for today. Uh, I got a lot of work to do, <laughs> and it's getting hot in my shop. Um, so I really appreciate you guys joining in, and hopefully you find value in this stuff. As, uh, as long as, you know, I have the time to do it, I'll keep doing it. Um, and... Uh, there's no flying happening around here. So hopefully you guys are getting some flying and you're 
in and you're staying safe uh, and having a good time getting some sharp uh, shop time in. So, all right. I really appreciate you guys. Uh, all your kind comments. I really appreciate that very much. Um, and so, yeah, I guess we'll do a part two next time. Hopefully next week uh, I'll have this mostly in primer. Uh, we can talk through some of that, uh, but that's, uh, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what happens. So, all right. Thanks guys. And I'll see you next time. Stay safe. Get some, get some building done. Get some, get some flying done and uh, stay safe out there. All right. We'll see you next time.